Namaste, and uh, welcome to another one of my videos. Um, <clears throat> I just kind of wanted to share really quick um, <clears throat> a couple of my um, um, Buddhist um, so-called um, ritual items, or um, I guess you can call them prayer items. Um, for lack of better words. Um, basically some of these things I think could be used for rituals. Um, I use them mostly for meditation purposes and um, um, what we have here really is um, really just kind of four things um, I just kind of wanted to share. Um, the first one here is um, a set of mala beads which is made out of um, rose wood. And the main beads are made out of rose wood. And the bigger beads here is made out of uh, lotus seeds. And the bigger, the biggest bead right here, this one, is made out of um, bodhi seed. And it has a basically just has a very simple um, beaded tassel with smaller rosewood beads and smaller um, lotus seeds at the bottom. And um, the significance really of this is that I've, I don't really know a whole whole lot about um, the symbolicness of rosewood, but I heard that um, it's sort of um, it's considered to be a sacred wood and. I've heard that it can kind of represent compassion uh, because of the color. Now the color in this video is not good. Um, I have the window open and I have the overhead lights on and I have the settings on the video set um, to where this is as clear as it can get so it might just possibly be my phone. But anyway, um, so rosewood is actually a very very dark um, brown with tones of maroon purplish kind of uh, undertones. Um, it's very pleasant to look at in, in the in natural light and um, lotus seeds um, kind of represent enlightenment in general because lotus flowers bloom in the murky waters of swamps and, and that kind of thing and that kind of represents our deluded mind <clears throat> and when we understand the Dharma and we you know practice the Buddhist teachings and you know we can become enlightened um, and it grows out up from the water and um, into a very pure flower. Um, so pure, in fact, that um, water um, cannot stick to it. You know, um, it just falls right off. And the drops of the water fall right off. So it's um, extremely pure. And of course, the bodhi seed, bodhi, bodhi is. Um, a type of tree, the tree that the Buddha sat under um, when he attained enlightenment. So that's kind of what that represents. So um, out of all the malas and the, and the juzu slash ninju beads um, that I have and, and have made, I didn't make this one, but um, this one is probably the most symbolic in terms of um, Buddhist symbolism that I currently own. Um, this is one of my favorite ones, and um, one of the very nice things about wood malas is that they're very lightweight, and these tend to darken over time with use, so some of the beads almost look black. I'm sure in the video they, they kind of look black, but um, they're very, very rich, dark brown. So anyway, moving on to the next thing. Um, the I kind of showed this one in, my, in another video. Um, this is a uh, Tibetan singing bowl, and it has a, um, a mantra going all the way around it in Sanskrit, um, which basically the mantra is Om Mani Padme Hom, and I'm not going to get into all the details about that, um, but um, one thing that I heard that it actually means is um, Hail to the Jewel in the Lotus. And there's 
quite extensive, very complicated um, translations of basically what that means <laughs> in English. Um, Om is uh, an incredibly ancient mantra all on, all, all on its own, and um, the um, the singing bowl cushion here, that's the symbol for Om, I'm sure most of you probably recognize this, um, is extremely old, and a lot of mantras actually start with Om, and or end with Om. Um, I've heard that um, in certain um, Indian traditions that this is kind of the... Um, the sound of God, as it were, sort of the, the vibrations in which are within all things. Um, that all things are basically made out of vibrations. Um, so in order to use it, really, um, I know I kind of showed you a sample of this in my shrine video, but um, I'm going to hear kind of what you can do with it. You can either just... You can do it like that, or you can use the striker and um, you can make it hum no I'm not doing a really good job with this because it's on the you know, everything's here on the carpet but uh, So, um, you can just sort of use that in, in meditation. Um, obviously the mala beads are kind of for meditation. You, you say mantras, doing one bead at, at a time, um, and you say, Om Mani Padme Hom, Om Mani Padme Hom, or, or any mantras that, that you know. Um, there's numerous ones. The, the singing bowl, I'm not really sure exactly, traditionally wise, what, what you can do with this, um, in terms of the you know, making it hum like that, but um, I know that you can just, you know, strike it a couple times for meditation, like beforehand or afterhand, and um, this right here, I don't know if you can see that too well, um, this is a small ornamental necklace that I, that I bought, um, and um, this longer scroll kind of looking one. Um, you can't really see it too good, but it, it has the Om symbol on it. Um, it basically just came like this. Um, not not any of these other things here, but just this part, the top part. Um, that's all that it was. And basically it's a, um, a Buddhist prayer box slash prayer scroll, kind of, if you will. Um, and I added um, this part right here, which is a um, basically like an eternal knot, um, which kind of symbolizes that all things are interconnected, and also that um, the, you know the Buddhist teachings is um, infinite. Um, and um, I basically just took some some red cord and added some. Um, Chinese green jade beads at the bottom, but um, what's interesting about this is um, you could take the cap off. I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. Um, you take one of the ends off on the top, like so. I just took that off there, and. inside, which I can't, I really can't uh, do this one-handed, but inside, I don't know if you can see that too good, but there's a piece of paper that is rolled up in there, um, and um, I've taken it out once to just kind of unroll it and see, um, but there is, um, again, the mantra, Om Mani Padme Hom is in the is is uh is written down in, in a scroll like form and rolled up and put inside of here 
Um, so this is just something that you can kind of wear. It's not really something that you know you use in in terms of like any rituals or anything. But you can just kind of have this on and um, just kind of have that reminder of um, having compassion and just kind of take a prayer with you, you know, everywhere that you go, um, etc. Um, so it's not really a ritual item, but I just kind of wanted to throw that in there as well. <clears throat> and then this is brand new today uh, for me. Um, I just got this in the mail today. Um, this is a uh, Tibetan prayer wheel, a handheld prayer wheel. And um, it really wasn't all that expensive. It was about $12. And um, it's got lots of detail. Um, when I got it, um, I was actually quite surprised. I mean, these things can sell up to $200 plus. Um, this one's only $12. Um, and it, it works just fine. Um, the outer circle here on the top, I don't know a whole lot about Tibetan Buddhist symbols um, and, and artwork, but um, I turn it this way, and the one now facing us at the very, very bottom is the, um, you can kind of see that, uh, like I showed you with the uh, necklace a second ago, um, the eternal knot is, um, is now on, on the very bottom symbol. And the, the thing in the center is the Dharma wheel. Which basically, this is the wheel which has eight spokes, and the eight spokes represents the um, <clears throat> each part of the Noble Eightfold Path. So like right view, right intention, right speech, right mindfulness, etc. Um, and around it, um, here once again, um, there's a, a mantra. And um, these jewels, I'm not sure if they're real or not, but um, I think this one is probably turquoise, or is supposed to be turquoise, if, and, and this one I think is supposed to be coral. Um, for $12, I really don't think that that's actually real, but um, anyway. And um, it has a, uh, basically how this works is it has a chain attached to the wheel, and um, this little piece right here at the end of the chain, and I don't really know what that mean, what what this uh, represents, but basically this thing is supposed to um, inside of it. And I already checked; it has um, um, similar to the um, to the necklace I showed you. It has a much larger um, uh, scroll-like paper that's coiled up inside of this that has the om. Mani um, mantra um, inside, and um, this is sort of like a weight on the end of the chain. And I don't know. Again, it, it kind of looks like a seashell, but I'm not exactly sure what that represents. Um, but I do know that basically the idea behind this is, uh, if I can get this started, you basically spin it. There we go. Um, you basically just continue to spin this, and the idea is that. Um, the prayers that are inside um, are basically carried, you know, they're spinning around and, and basically um, symbolic of this is kind of sort of like the wind is uh, carrying these prayers um, throughout um, the world. And then um, the more, I think inside of this, um, the more uh, prayers that are in there um, multiplied by the number of rotations that it spins around um, is sort of supposed to be something to the effect of um, the more benefits and um, uh, the more uh, merits that you are sending out to the world um, have loving compassion and wishing you know peace and all that kind of stuff um, towards all beings